just before filming, actually, I went to her house, which is always weird to say that I went to Rita Marley's house to hang out with her. That time is no. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Of Rita Marley, such an iconic woman and an accomplished musician in her own right. Her story is so deeply intertwined with Bob, though, and, and her children. But what do you admire about Rita and what drew you to the role? I genuinely admire everything about Rita <laughs> and learning who she is, what she comes with in terms of a presence, what she adds to the room. Um, the energy and the spirituality that she harnessed so greatly and has right now as though it's no time has passed at all is something that's really stuck with me every time I think of her I think of her energy first and playing her that's how I approached I guess the characterizing of what everyone you know who doesn't know Rita Marley is going to learn her to be her energy her presence and I'd like to think that in scenes where she was present even if she wasn't saying something you're gonna feel her and I think that that's that's who she is at her core she has this really powerful force of an energy that isn't loud it's actually quite quite peaceful and and quite small in volume but loud in in feeling a quiet strength I guess quite strength yeah and a, and yeah. a vulnerability also that she was able to to balance out, which was special to get to know. Also. Were you able to spend much time with Rita and, and get to know her during filming? Yeah, it, just before filming, actually, I went to her house, which is always weird to say that I went to Rita Marley's house to hang out with her <laughs> um, on a couple of occasions. And we we laughed, we joked, we, we broke breads. We, you know, her dog was there, just like, we we really chilled as just two human beings just appreciating each other. And in that moment, the first time that I met her, I thought, wow, she's just a wonderful woman. It's just really nice to just be able to spend time with wonderful women who have wonderful intentions, who, you know, have always been a wonderful person, who loves people, loves, you know, creating, loves giving wisdom, receiving wisdom. She very much so seems like a, a woman who, no matter how young, you have something to teach me. You have wisdom to impart on me, even though I'm older, you know? Yeah. Um, she's harnessed so much and it's just, she just seems so at peace with, mm. with the life and the world. And it's really admirable, you know, going through the journey that she has. So yeah, once in a lifetime on a on a opportunity to be with her. Yeah. And speaking of wonderful women, your films carry such important messages of female empowerment. I'm not sure whether that's strategic or whether it's an accident, but you know, Woman King and uh, Captain Marvel, obviously, um, even 007 taking on the first female to to take on that mantle. And even Miss Honey, I guess, from Matilda too. Very, very strong woman. What boxes does a role have to tick to get you on board? Such a good question. I have to firstly question if I'm able to do it. Even if I know I'm able to do it, I enjoy that there's something in the back of my mind that challenges me to have to get over a hill to achieve said thing. And it doesn't matter how many people are telling me the role is perfect for you and oh my gosh, you're going to kill it and can't wait. Gosh, you can do that standing on your head. I know that in the back of my head, I can't. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> and going from, I can't, I can possibly to I've got this is a really enjoyable journey for me. So I, I like that. And, and yes, in answer to what you'd said before, it is intentional to have all of these roles really mean something for us as women. I decided quite early on that I wasn't going to be typecast. I wasn't going to play the same role twice unless it like felt called to. And I wasn't going to allow anything from disrupting the flow of what femininity should be and how we should redefine it in cinema. I was going to take control of what I know I can do and the, I guess, responsibility that I have as an artist 
and really take it one step further and push the needle forward into somewhere that makes sense for me as a woman in the world. Speaking of pushing it further, obviously we know you can sing and you have a fantastic voice, um, but how did you approach the accent work for this one? So my parents are Jamaican, so okay. I, we only spoke Patois in, in the house. So that was that was there, though I did really need to do my research because one thing I realized I had never done is speak in a Jamaican accent in the way that Rita spoke, which is very light, very, like I said, peaceful. She actually has a peaceful voice, especially when mm. she was younger, really like in tune with herself. There was kind of like a, a dance that her vocals go through when she speaks or something that I hadn't been able to do before. And outside of Miss Honey, none of my characters that I played have been liked. <laughs> They've all yeah. been, you know, quite determined and, and strong and, and powerful. And she has power, power in a different way. And um, that was new for me. And I found that through my voice and through the accent, I had to find this different part of myself that I hadn't actually visited before. And we had great dialect coaches that also doubled up as um, <laughs> life coaches when you questioned if you were able to do something or not on set on the fly. Yeah. Um, and it was it was just a beautiful journey in finding a voice that represented her that wasn't a caricature that also sounded like it was coming from my mouth. And the Mali legacy obviously has such a huge cultural significance globally. Um, that goes without saying. But was there anything you were surprised to learn about Rita and Bob and the family behind what we all know? A lot of things. Some of which actually I decided early on that I was just gonna leave that as as information for me to just understand her more to understand them more so that I could ensure that the journey that I'm taking is the most authentic one and I found a lot of peace in that there's a love that the Bob and Rita that we learn in the film that there's a love that is just different it's that kind of like very much so movie like love if you just take that just the feeling of them of how they felt for each other really early on in their relationship that's a quality that I heard felt and witnessed when I met her for the first time that yeah. mentioning of Bob's name I don't know if she was aware of this but she kind of went back into this um teenage type of love or like school child type love mm -hmm. where you've met a boy and you don't know if he likes you and you don't know if you're going to see him yeah. again. And it's all very sweet. <laughs> like I didn't know with playing strong women, you know, we don't often get the chance to see where their vulnerability lies and how, where their sweetness comes from and how people make them feel and how love makes them feel. That's something that's almost like missing within love stories sometimes yeah. in cinema. I just found that that, that sweet quality was something to really delve into and really harness in like the argument scene, for example, that, you know, on the surface, it might look like just people shouting each other, but really underneath that is, I love the bones of this man. I just happen to not really like him in this moment. Yeah, that, that truly eternal love really came across on the screen. So congratulations and thank you for your performance. Just before I go, we're all about celebrating the joys of cinema here at Popcorn Podcast. Can you share a moment in a film that you've seen or an experience at the cinema that stayed with you and brought you joy? Big question. This so <laughs> yeah, it is. It's hard to pick one, isn't it, when you... <laughs> hard. You know, the first thing, because we, I was just talking about love and complicated love and especially black and brown women being able to really have the broad spectrum of love like the full relationship and and what it means and what you the challenges you go through in relationships past lives just came to mind I loved that movie I think that Greta is one of the most oh, like I could cry just like oh she's just such she's so delicious yeah. to watch I, I cried I loved the performances. I loved how complicated it was. I loved how um, I felt torn in different moments. It literally like swung me from wall to wall. And I love when a movie it really challenges me to stay on side with someone. Like I didn't know who to back for at any given yeah. time. I was so immersed in, in that journey. And it's those kinds of movies that make me feel 
grateful to be a performer, to be able to like make audiences feel that. Like it's so emotion, it's such an emotional, visceral reaction to performances like that. So yeah. I would just say the title of Greta in Past Lives. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect choice. Thank you, Lashana, so much for your time. It was really a great honour having you with us. Thank you. Thank you so much.